They spray our skies Interact with these with the magnetic toxic chemicals. Space travel is space Mars rover is a complete Episode of Debunk the Funk. In the most recent episode, we were examining the flat earth claim that gravity does not exist. We took a look at and explained in that episode how the flat earth concept, well, it's not compatible with the idea of gravitation, that all matter attracts all matter. That if such a flat earth was possible, well, the mass of that earth itself would pull itself into a sphere. Thus, for somebody to believe in a flat earth, they must also disbelieve in gravitational attraction. In fact, in the very first Debunk the Funk episode, where we first examined the flat earth mindset and ideas, we explained how there's only a few things that I can, I can really pin down that all of them agree upon, and then there's a lot of different splinter groups. Well, this is one area where they splinter off. How do they deal with this gravitational attraction? How do they dismiss it, and what do they try to put in its place? A good number of them deal with the idea of gravity as being something that you can just explain with density. But that's also why in the most recent episode, we set up a demonstration that showed not only that there's a downward force, but we did so in a way where density is useless to try to explain what's happening. Well, another group that splinters here too is one that doesn't try to use density to describe gravitational effects, but instead tries to say, again, gravity does not exist, but that that downward force is the result of an electrostatic charge that the Earth has. Well, in fact, not too long after the most recent episode was published, a comment surfaced on there that was referring to this idea. This less popular flat earth claim that, yes, there is a downward force, but it's not gravity. It's instead an electrostatic charge that the earth has and that objects are attracted to this electrostatic charge. That's what the downward force actually is. Let's term this idea electrostatic gravitation. Now, admittedly, this is a less than popular flat earth claim. The idea of electrostatic gravitation is something that the majority of flat earth proponents that I've encountered, uh, they don't pay it much mind or consider it a valid idea. But still, some do. I have run across some flat earth enthusiasts who do bring up this idea from time to time. The claim of electrostatic gravitation amounts to the idea that the earth has an electric charge. Whether this charge is negative or positive, I've never found anybody promoting this idea who has ever pinned that down for me. Still, their idea, the Earth has an electrostatic charge, and also all objects have an electrostatic charge, and that the Earth is pulling down on all objects because of these electrostatic charges somehow. Now, beyond that, I've never really found any proponents of this idea going into much detail about what are the actual logistics, what's the physics of these electrostatic charges, and how are all these objects being pulled downward. There's already plenty of flags on the play for this. Why are these electrostatic charges that all objects have not something we seem to be able to ever measure? After all, when an object does have a charge, we are very able to measure that. Are these objects and the Earth oppositely charged, and is that why, according to this idea, they attract? And if so, wouldn't every object that isn't the Earth then have the same charge? And thus, if all objects that aren't the Earth have the same charge, wouldn't they all repel each other? Yet, we don't observe all non-Earth objects repelling each other. You might already see that some basic fifth grade knowledge of how charges work already debunks this idea pretty effectively. But still, I can understand the desire for some empirical evidence. So, in a completely independent avenue of reasoning, let's show in a reproducible, experimental way why the idea of electrostatic gravitation just cannot be true. But I think this will be a bit easier to see in my classroom. Now, in testing out this idea, we have to work within the framework, and we gotta make sure that we understand and agree what that framework is. I'm not saying I agree with these ideas, but I am saying let's suspend our disbelief for a little bit and work within that framework to test out the idea. So according to the electrostatic charge gravitational idea, there is no such thing as gravity. Gravity does not exist. Next, the Earth and all objects have a charge. And third, the reason why objects appear to be attracted to the Earth, the reason why they fall towards the Earth, the reason why it's heavy to try to lift them up, is not again because of gravity, 
but it's because of these charges and that the charge of the Earth is what's attracting all other objects to it. And so that means that part of this framework is the idea that charges do exist. So let's build into that also, what are some things that we know about charges? A charge is a property of matter that matter can have, that objects can have. Second, when it comes to charges, there's two types. We call them positive and negative. And third, if something is oppositely charged another object, those two opposite charged objects will attract each other. And then the reverse of that, if two objects have the same charge, both positive or both negative, well, those like charges will repel each other. Opposites attract, like charges repel. Okay, so now that we've established the framework that we're working within, I can show how this electrostatic gravitational idea cannot be true. And I don't need any fancy equipment to do it. I just need a balloon and some uh, little piece of paper. Now, as we do something like this, keep in mind, we're going to assume that the electrostatic gravitational idea is true, unless or until we see some evidence that it cannot be true. Okay, so for starters, these little pieces of paper, they fall. No surprise there, right? And according to the electrostatic gravitational idea, the reason why they're falling is because those pieces of paper must be charged, and they are being attracted to the charge of the Earth. Here's a balloon. Now this balloon, if I let it go, also falls. Again, according to the electrostatic gravitational idea, this would be because the balloon has a charge and the Earth has a charge and the balloon is being attracted by the Earth's charge. Good so far? Now, if I take this balloon and I put it near those little pieces of paper, you can see that nothing really that interesting is happening. Pieces of paper are unaffected by the balloon. And now, the moment you probably saw it coming, Let's rub this balloon on my hair. What does it do to these pieces of paper now? As you can see, these pieces of paper are attracted now to the balloon. Does this still work within the framework that we've been talking about? Within this static electric gravitational framework, their explanation for why the pieces of paper fall down is because they have a charge and they're being attracted to the Earth. Well, that would have to mean that the charge of the Earth is opposite the charge of those pieces of paper. Opposites attract. Now, if the balloon receives a charge from rubbing with my hair, and it's evident that it has a charge as it's attracting these pieces of paper, if it's able to pull these pieces of paper up from the Earth, and onto the balloon, then this balloon must have a stronger charge than that of the Earth, but it also must be the same charge as that of the Earth. But all of that put together then would mean if this balloon has the same charge as that of the Earth, and that there is no such thing as gravity, with two objects, the Earth and this balloon, being the same charge, well, when I let it go, there should be nothing attracting this balloon to the Earth. And in fact, it should be repelled by the Earth, and it should move up. Does it? Color me unsurprised. There is no way that what we just observed could possibly work within the framework of the Earth having a charge and no gravity existing. The evidence just does not fit the idea. All right, let's go back to the lab. So there you have it. Quick recap. If a charged object, our balloon, can attract other objects away from the Earth, those little pieces of paper, the charged object would need to have the same charge as that of the Earth. Thus, having the same charge as the Earth, if that object, the balloon, is released, there should only be a repulsive force pushing it away from the Earth, not an attractive one. Yet, when we let go of that object, the balloon, it still falls. I'm calling it electrostatic gravitation, or whatever term you want to apply to this idea, debunked. Now, after the last episode, and now this one, I could see somebody still making the argument, why is it that you trust this downward force is gravitational attraction and not some other force? Well, that's the topic for the next episode of Debunk the Funk. Stay tuned. Alright, I'm Rich Lund, thank you for watching Debunk the Funk, and remember, the world needs critical thinkers. 
make sure you're one of them.